Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. My name is Josue Diaz and this is episode number 40. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing shear walls and how they work, but I'm going to do it with a simple shoebox. Are you interested on in how I'm going to do that? If you want to know, don't go anywhere. You're about to find out. Shear walls was something that when I was starting to study architecture, it kind of baffled me for a bit. But uh, I'm going to show you a few things that I think are quite simple to understand. Once you see this with a shoebox, I think it's going to be a piece of cake. I have a camera up here, so I'm going to switch up to that camera and start with that shoebox. All right, so I'm going to take this box, move my keyboard over, try to clean this up a little bit so that I can show you guys what this does. So this is just a simple shoebox, nothing special about it. So let's see how this can help. First, let's try to try to make this look something like a house, um, something that'll be a, li a little bit more recognizable to somebody who, who might be looking at a building for the first time. With Okay, so let's try to make a simple house out of this. Again, it's not going to be anything complicated, it's just a simple, just a simple home, okay? So here's your basic house. As you can see, you have a little door, a little cute little window, you know. I told you it was gonna be a kindergarten house or like a little kid's house, but you have a little sliding door, another little window at the back door. Oh, I need to label this one. And you have another little window with another side door. It's interesting that because the back of this box is black, I had to use a silver permanent marker with this and a black marker with that. In any case, here is your typical house. Uh, let's assume this is a wood framed house, okay? Now, each one of these walls represents an exterior wall. Now, norm what we've done here is we've taken the roof out, right? Normally, we would have a roof on top of this. Let me actually cut up a roof really quick to make that a point. Okay, so back to this. So normally, you would have a cute little roof like this, right? You have your little cute roof, and then you have your house, back of the house, front of the house. So I just kind of want to give you a little bit of a overall view of what this might look like. Actually, this is the back door. Now you have your front door. Here we go, that's your little house. Now. Pay attention to how these walls, I already showed it really quick, but the distance between this wall and that wall is a lot shorter than the distance between this wall and that wall, right? So if I push on this wall, you can see that it bends less because the distance between these walls is much shorter. When I press on, when I press on this wall here, the distance between this wall and this wall is much longer. So it bends quite a bit more than your shorter wall. So it's quite simple. Uh, it might seem like I'm repeating myself, but this wall is not falling over because these two walls are holding it up, right? When I try to move it. And this wall is not falling over because these two walls are, are holding it up. When you look at diagrams, they often look something like this. This diagram shows a wall having a load imposed onto it and then the side walls pushing back. So how this affects or the, the model that we're doing is like this. So you can see that when I exert force on this, these two walls are pushing it in that direction. Now the walls can also be interchanged. So in this diagram, we're switching the same, it's the same idea, but you can see how the opposite walls act in the same way. So when we look at that in our little box, it's the same idea, right? We have a wall here that is pushing it back on that. And so when I, when we push on this wall, or if I, if I do this, let me see. So if I push on this wall, these two walls are pushing it back. So this wall cannot fall over. 
Effectively, what these walls are doing is they're acting as shear. They're resisting the force imposed onto them in the shear value. Now, using terms that we are that we've been talking about at the beginning of the video, these walls here are now acting as shear walls. So if I push on the wall here, these walls act as shear and they push back. And that's what a shear wall does. Now, this may seem redundant, but in order for this wall not to fall over, they need to have a connection, right? So what happens if that connection is gone? This may seem redundant and maybe a dumb experiment, but let's find out. I cut the connection between this wall and this wall. So this wall is no longer attached to these walls. So what's going to happen when I push on this wall? Well, it seems even dumb to ask, right? But you can see that it bends over. There, there's, no, there, there's no longer an attachment. So these walls that were acting as shear before, we have this wall that was pushing on it, and this wall that was pushing on that, they no longer push because there is no connection. Now that may seem like something silly and perhaps something that may be obvious to you, but in order for a shear wall to provide shear, there needs to be a connection. If there is no connection, then guess what? There is no shear value for these walls. Now let's flip this box over to the side that is connected. So this, this side is still connected. So far we've been using the word sidewalls. When, when I push on this wall, I say, well, these sidewalls hold this wall up. Well, another word for side is lateral. Did a little light bulb just go off in your head when you heard the word lateral? Because you hear the expression lateral forces all the time, right? And that's what it is. Shear walls resist forces that come from a lateral wall. And it works both ways, right? Because when you exert or you put a force into a wall, it gets transferred to a lateral wall. So it's both ways. But at least now you know why it's called a lateral force. Let's get back to the video. But we were talking now about the side that was connected. Now, this side's still connected. There, there, there's still a good bond between this side of the wall and that side of the wall. But what if, what if we have to have an opening? Like, let's say that the owner wants to have a door or a window or, or whatever. There needs to be an opening here. What happens? Well, let's find out. Okay, so now we have our little opening here. So this could be a, a window, a door, or whatever the homeowner wants it to have, right? But, well, there's still a connection and I'm kind of over exaggerating what the concept is here. But now that we're had now now that we have an opening here, what's going to happen when I push on this wall? Can you can you maybe think about what's going to happen? I mean, so far here, right? If I push on it, it's pretty sturdy. But if I push on it here, guess what? Oh man, look at that. You see that? That lateral force that I'm imposing here, it's fine because there's a good connection and the wall is relatively solid. But here, now we put an opening and now what's happening? It's, it's not transferring adequately. You see it's buckling and that's what you don't want. So the purpose of showing you this is that if you have a large opening too close to your corner, that can have a direct impact on how this wall is gonna transfer the lateral load to this wall. So even though you may be calling a shear wall out here, if it's too far away, it may not be doing its job properly. But now let's look at another experiment. Uh, on this side, we do have another sliding door, but this one is quite a bit further away from this wall. So what's gonna happen with this if we put an opening on this wall? Well, let's find out. Now again, some of these things are, are being exaggerated for a purpose, but in any case, now we have an opening here and we have a front door wall there. So what happens? You see, this is still able, I'm, I'm putting quite a, bit of a per, quite a bit of pressure here, but this wall is still able to resist without buckling. Why? Because the opening for this window is far enough away from this corner that it can resist that lateral force imposed into it. So you can have an opening 
But oftentimes, if you're doing just a typical wood framed uh, building, like a home, and you're just using typical allowances by the model codes, they may limit how close your openings can get to your opposing or your perpendicular wall because of this reason. Now, earlier we did talk about how the distance between the lateral walls or the shear walls, they played a big role on whether or not or how much this wall bent. We talked about this wall bending a lot more than this wall. That is why model codes also limit how far away shear walls can be. For example, this one is a lot closer from here to there. And if this was still attached, which is completely not, the distance between this one and that one is a little bit, well, not a little bit, it's quite different, a lot longer the distance between these two than the distance, the distance between this two. So have in mind that because of that, the distance between shear walls, we, we saw earlier how this one bent a lot more because the distance was further away from these ones. So have that in mind. As we're getting close to the conclusion of this example, one, one of the things I wanted to mention was as, we, as we're pushing on this wall, notice that off, the, the flexibility happens at the top, right? Because we, in this example, we took the roof off. But if we press on the bottom, like on the bottom part, it doesn't move. It doesn't even you know, budge a bit because it's attached to the floor. Right? So your floor is acting as a diaphragm. In other words, it's also a shear wall, but it's in the horizontal value and your shear wall is in a vertical, right? So same exact thing, same exact concept, but they often call these a diaphragm. So this, this floor, which is also a shear wall, but because it's horizontal, they call it a diaphragm, makes it so that I can't push on this. So I can't really push too much on the bottom. If I push on the top, you can see the effect right away. But then again, have in mind that what did we do earlier? We took the roof out of this house. So if the roof was still connected the way that this is connected, then your roof would also create a diaphragm. And this would also, when you push on it, if, see like in this case, if I was, if I was pushing on the top portion of this, but your roof was in place, then it wouldn't bend, similar to how this part doesn't bend. But right now, for the sake of this example, this part is bending because there's no roof. But it helps show you and, and provide you a visual example as to what a shear wall is. Last but not least, I want to mention how this example was just meant to show you what a shear wall is. We explained how a shear wall works, how it receives lateral loads, but it needs to be in a perpendicular or in a wall that is in such a way allowed to receive a lateral load. The thing I wanted to clarify is that we talked about having windows and how this could be affected. This was just having in mind that this might be a typical wood frame construction. You are able to have openings like this and you are able to have them close to this perpendicular wall. But when you do this, you need to get a, a structural engineer or somebody that can design a frame that will prevent this wall from bending or buckling over like you see here. But then that gets not into what a shear wall is, but into different types of shear walls because in a typical house, we're talking about plywood on top of wood studs, but there are so many different types of systems that can resist shear forces or lateral forces, but that will be for another video. So that's it, it's pretty simple. Shear walls are just one of the many systems that resist lateral forces. And we used a simple shoebox just to show how a lateral force can be resisted by a shear wall. But there are many other systems that resist lateral forces. There's K braces, there's moment resisting frames. Perhaps in another episode, we can talk about them. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe. If you would like to support me, one of the ways of doing so is through Patreon. All of the details are in the comments section below. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.